Have you ever felt like you were in shackles? Well, stay tuned to learn how to unshackle your purpose and escape from bondage. My name is Jason Bradley, and you're watching Urban Report. Hello and welcome to Urban Report. My guests today are Captain Tim Turner, commander of Boone County Jail, Lemuel Vega founder and volunteer for Christmas Behind Bars, Julie Meadows, 3ABN production crew, and Ian Vandervalk, another valuable member of our 3ABN production team. Welcome to Urban Report, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, it's great to have you here. We're going to dive into your testimony, Captain Turner, because I see this jail commander right next to me. Uh, but <clears throat> there's a background story there, and uh, I'd, I'd love to jump into that. Uh, so, uh, obviously, uh, I was not born Timothy Turner, so I was adopted. My name was Warren Timothy Gann, and I think from an early age, um, there were labels or things that I tried to live up to to other people's expectations and just continued to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, into my adolescent years of drug and alcohol abuse mm -hmm. uh, myself and struggled with that. Got married uh, four years in, divorced her, uh, still was not finding that happiness. Mm -hmm. um, remarried her a year later. Mm -hmm. um, found out that she wasn't still the issue, uh, that I still was trying to find that happiness, mm -hmm. uh, was ultimately her and I uh, started to go to church and found the Lord and nice. it filled the hole. Mm -hmm. um, worked, for the pr worked for the Department of Correction, DOC, okay. for a few years. Uh, figured out that it just wasn't the right fit for me at the age and the time. What did you do for the DOC? Uh, I was on the walk, so I was okay. a walk officer, so I was a, a corrections officer. Okay. Um, on the emergency response team, all of those things. Mm -hmm. Still just wasn't a right fit for me and my family at the time, so I ended up starting a uh, construction company on my own and worked that for the next 20 some years. Wow. Uh, still wanting to give back somehow, mm -hmm. but didn't know how that looked, couldn't get it out of your system. Well, mm -hmm. they say once you get it in your blood, it's there. And so I've uh, seen a, an ad one morning, uh, showed it to my wife. Mm -hmm. She's like, you're never gonna get rid of this, so just go apply, and I did. And long story short, uh, started with the sheriff's department. Wow. Um, was happy, a floor officer, got moved into a transport officer, mm -hmm. uh, kind of was a great, deal or gig in my opinion. Uh -huh. uh, I would transport people. They were obviously shackled up and locked up in the back of my squad car and I could preach to them. <laughs> they weren't going to leave on me. <laughs> yes. Where were they going? Right, right. where were That's they going? Right. That's right. Uh, about a year and a half into it, a uh, major called me and wanted me to come outside the courthouse, pick me up, took me to the sheriff's office. Sheriff then asked me what I would think uh, if he asked me or told me that he wanted me to run his jail. And I told him I wasn't qualified, mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. um, that had to be an intimidating experience too though, didn't it? it, it did he, you said he <coughs> called you or did he come pick you up? And My major picked me up Okay. and <laughs> then we went to the sheriff's office. So yes, it was very intimidating. I thought one, major is picking me up and yes. two, we're going to the sheriff's office. It's probably not good. Yeah. <laughs> But they were wanting to offer you uh, a promotion. They were considering you for a promotion. Yes. Yes, yes. And I think that uh, at the time, I was absolutely 100% against it. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I did not feel qualified. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, he saw something that I didn't. Amen. And so did God. Amen. <laughs> and, and, and the beautiful thing is that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And I, I think that was a, a beautiful thing that took place because 
you being in your position that you're in uh, allowed you to open up the doors for Christmas Behind Bars, for 3ABN, uh, to come into your facility and spread the gospel along with your efforts as well. Um, that is God correct. So he's uh, our county, the sheriff and the major have pretty much uh, a free reign. Uh, religion and government generally don't go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. However, they um, they let me do as I wish. Mm -hmm. And just like inviting new people in and inviting Christmas behind bars. So yes. uh, they're 100 percent believers and mm -hmm. They're on board, and I think that it only makes our job inside the facility just that much easier. Amen. And I would say that it's probably reflected in the recidivism rate as well, and those numbers and the decrease. Absolutely it is. And, and that for sure. Lemuel, you look like something's on your mind. Your gears are turning over there. Oh, <laughs> what you got? I, Captain Turner, I'd like to just uh, say a few, couple comments on your on your story. You know, one is you experience the drugs and alcohol at an early age. Mm -hmm. And so you understand that, that seeking and that pain and that, that emptiness. Mm -hmm. uh, and you said that Christ was the answer. The Lord put you in this capacity to run a jail. I mean, run the prison, whatever. Uh, so you have a lot of people that follow your command. I just want to tell you that as you were driving those inmates around in the back of that cop car, I want to let you know that the sheriff would call me out of the jail and he would set me in his office and he'd say, Lemuel, I just know there's change for your life. I just know, I just know. So somehow he believed in my life when all my life I heard I wouldn't be nothing, I wouldn't be nobody. And, and so what you shared with those inmates in the back of that cop car, you will not know until eternity, the encouragement, the spark. You know, the one woman that said, you told her clean thinking. Do you remember the words you told her? Do you remember what she, she said on the... Uh, good thoughts in, or you told her something about something. I just told her that anything that we put into our mind or into our body will come out into our life. Okay. Mm. And so she thought that she had to realize her thinking. That's where it started for positive behavior, positive change. And then Jason, you were there when we gave her a study Bible. Yes. And then she was back reading the study Bible with another inmate. And yeah. so, so praise the Lord. So, Amen. And Amen. her testimony is phenomenal. So I just want to say that your work uh, in the incarceration with the people who are incarcerated, Thank you. Yes, yes, very much appreciated. You know, we got to take uh, Julie Meadows in to uh, jail and Ian Vandervalk, mm -hmm. and it was their first time going. Yeah. What was that experience like? Uh, what, what did you have in your mind prior to going to the jail? Mm -hmm. And then what was your experience and your takeaway from being inside? Right, so well, Lemuel asked my cousin Tierra and I if we would go and speak to the inmates. And at first we were so excited. We are like, another opportunity to tell people about Jesus. So we were excited and we were practicing our skit we wanted to do. And then Tierra started to get really nervous and she just stopped and she's like, Julie, I don't think that we're qualified to do this. She says, people aren't gonna listen to us because well, how can we relate to these people? You know, here we are young and we've never been in trouble with the law before. They, they probably won't even listen to us because they're gonna think, these girls have no idea. They have no idea. And so she started to get very discouraged. And then I just, it came to my mind, God's promise that he gave us. And he said that his word will not return void. Amen. And so I just kept thinking that and I was like, if we go in there with Christ, at the forefront, mm -hmm. someone will have to get something from it. Yes. And, and after going and just seeing the importance of prison ministries, because I had no idea how important it is, but it's very important. Mm -hmm. And going in there, even if no one from the prison got anything, I know that I was blessed by it, mm -hmm. Tierra was blessed by it, all of the crew that went, mm -hmm. we were all blessed by it. But you could see in, in the inmates' faces, you could see a change happening and it was, very overwhelming to be there for that. Amen, a rewarding experience. Ian, what about you? Well, prior to going into it, I really didn't have any expectations. I, I didn't know what I was walking into. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of, you know, Isaiah 6, 8, here am I, send me, mm -hmm. you know? So, and that's just kind of what I was doing is just following, you know, what God wanted me to do. I was asked if I'd be willing to go into the jail and, and help out uh, with Christmas behind bars. and. Uh, and 3 ABN, I just, I was totally on board. So I really didn't know really what I was getting into. Yes. Uh, but going there, it was just, it was an incredible experience because you get to see hope mm 
-hmm. You get to see Jesus be brought into people's lives mm -hmm. when they weren't even looking in that direction. It's, in, you know, it's incredible how I know it happened in my life where, you know, I wasn't looking for Jesus, but Jesus was looking for me. Mm -hmm. And you could see that in this darkest place where, mm -hmm. you know, where these people are at in their lives, mm -hmm. they feel like there's nothing left and there's no hope that they just keep making wrong decision and wrong decision. Wrong. Well, we, you know, we've all done that, but Christ doesn't change his outlook on us. He still loves us. And yeah. you could see that change within those inmates and those who are incarcerated. Mm -hmm. They're beginning to see that change and see that love because of what Christmas Behind Bars is doing for them. They're seeing that somebody cares for them, Amen. that somebody loves them. Amen. And, you know, and I, with no strings attached, mm -hmm. they're just, we're there for them. And they see Christ, uh, you know, praise the God through us. Um, yes. You know, we're just the vessel that God is using. And uh, it's just a blessing to be a part of that. So I, I was touched through their skit. I was touched through the, you know, when I was communicating, when I was talking with some of the, mm -hmm. the inmates, it was just all around an incredible, incredible experience to see God and the Holy Spirit at work. Amen. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful experience, a rewarding experience, mm -hmm. and, and such a blessing. You know, uh, I often say that sometimes it's in the darkest moments that Christ's light shines the brightest. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's, that's really powerful. You think about Joseph. You know, he was enslaved, and he was imprisoned, and then he ended up just coming out on top and, and really saving the nation. Uh, God used him to really save the nation. Um, we have a highlight reel from when we recorded Unshackled Purpose, the first season in Boone County Jail. Thank you for opening your doors for that. Uh, I'd like for us to check that out right at this moment. I've lost contact with God. Um, to take you guys a time out to come there and, and to spread that word, I thought was huge because a lot of people just see us as criminals, you know, and that's it. But we're way more than that. We're moms, we're, we're people's children. We, we are still people. And I think um, it made us feel like that, everybody in the block. Like we couldn't stop talking about it. And we, um, we still talk about it today, and that was a couple weeks ago. I've lost my contact with, with God, but I'm getting it back. I'm definitely getting it back one day at a time. I have some people I know personally that have been arrested and incarcerated. And if I'm being honest, I've not been the most compassionate towards them in my heart. I feel like I had a harsh attitude towards them. And I think it was me going to prison and seeing these inmates and and just listening to them that I realized that these are people that are a lot like me. I'm just like these people. And so seeing that, and it really just hit me hard, especially when I saw young girls there that were close to my age. And just hearing how easy it is to end up in a place like they're in, it's so easy. What if God treated me the way that I'm thinking about these people? Like, well, Julie, you messed up. You had your chance, but you put yourself in this situation. What if God treated us that way? But He doesn't, and He's a compassionate God who's very forgiving. So if we mess up, He's always there to forgive us. And when we're struggling, He'll pick us up and He'll carry us. And I feel like that's showing us what we need to be doing as Christians. If, especially when someone is struggling or when they've messed up, we should be there for them and we should encourage them and, and help lift them up when they're going through a rough time. I've been in and out of jail. I, I honestly can't even tell you how many times. It's a lot. Um, when Christmas Behind Bars came in, um, I actually was still in bed. <laughs> and um, I just kept hearing him talk about how God had changed his life. And I mean, it, um, I've, never, I've never seen it. I've never heard your story. And it just, it really gives us hope. And um, I instantly had to come to my door um, and I didn't want to interrupt. So I just stood at my door and listened. And um, it was such an inspiring story. This time in my incarceration, I have never been more serious um, than any of my other car incarcerations. I have really just dove into the Bible. I've been, you know, praying for the Holy Spirit. And, and it all started with Christmas Behind Bars, really. Um, so the, your story was really amazing. 
and then the gifts was awesome too, so thank you. How does your faith play a role in what you do? Uh, I think it's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, where would I be without the Lord Jesus Christ I have? Amen. <laughs> I can only imagine, right, as the song says. So they're no different. If he can change a person like myself, he can change any of those people. They have to know that somebody believes in them. Absolutely. I'm no different. and. It's a great way that we can change their lives, even if it's one of them. Oh, yes. I can't tell you how many times this guy's come in, calls last minute, we've got bags. I'm like, yeah, bring them. And you can just see how receptive these people are because I think that the love, I, yeah, the goodie bags, I get it. But the love that you're not gonna surpass that. And in the first block that we went to, the ladies that were in there, the tears, those are those are raw those are real and some of those people and some of these individuals in this facility are so hardened and so hard for you to get the tears out of them right that's not us that is the holy spirit though. amen again i think that your heart has to be compelled to give back to see somebody change and really what kind of price tag can you put on that so amen Lemuel asked my cousin Julie and I to come and perform a skit for the inmates. Um, at first it was to speak with the women, but after we had finished all the women's blocks, he had asked us to go and speak to the men. So primarily what we did there was go and perform skits in every cell block and talking and interacting with the inmates. I had never been in a setting like that before and I was scared. Um, I guess I was expecting people to kind of not listen to what we had to say because we were young. I felt unqualified, I guess, for it. I was scared that, you know, people, they wouldn't care what we had to say or they wouldn't listen. And I was expecting probably the worst of the worst. <laughs> That's just how my mind goes. You know, I walked in there scared and expecting the worst and being afraid. And then just seeing that God gave me strength and, and knowledge to be able to do what I did, even though I was up there, you know, shaking half of the time, just to see him soften the hearts of people. You know, I, I went in there expecting nobody to listen to what we had to say. And then just seeing God move through the room and seeing people's demeanors just change, going from these hardened criminals to, to these opening, like receiving people, that impacted me so much, just seeing what the power of the Holy Spirit could do in a room, and I was very blessed to be a part of that. Uh, many nights crying here, you know, in my pillow, it uh, don't make you less of a man, but it, you realize what you lost when you are in these cold walls. I've lost a lot. I've had houses, I've had cars, trucks, motorcycles, and I've traded it all in for alcohol and drugs. It's a hard lesson to learn. I'm really grateful for the chance to have a second tur turn at life at my age. I, uh, I'm ready to get off the drugs and alcohol. And, well, Christmas behind bars is definitely a blessing. To the literature you guys give us, to magazines, to read, um, you know, the, it's, those are really nice. It's a blessing that people put in the work to give that to us. Just to know, hey, there's life and hope out there for us. You know, there's somebody thinking about us, the cards that, you know, people sign and you read and, you know, a lot of people don't get that. Wow, it seems like that was a tremendous blessing uh, to the men and women that were incarcerated or the clients, as, as you call them, uh, Captain Turner. Uh, Lemuel, we, we just saw a bunch of packages being put together. We also saw packages being handed out. Now, these were bulky, nice size packages, right? Yes, sir. Uh, what's in those packages? In the packages, we want to share Jesus. We want to share Jesus in a tangible way with, with a people group that don't got much. Mm -hmm. They've been forgotten. They feel hopeless. And if you can give them items that can be a blessing to them, whether it's granola bars, uh, chips, pretzels, snacks, soap, toothbrushes, toothpaste, shampoo, tangible things to tell them that you love them 
even if you don't even speak the words. Mm -hmm. So you're sharing the gospel and uh, we care for you and they know that it's a blessing from God because there's no strings attached. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of Christmas Behind Bars is every inmate, right, Captain Turner, receives one. Amen. Every inmate. So whether they're a Muslim, an Indian, a Haitian, a Hindu, a Christian, or just don't even know what they are, they all receive these gift packages and they say it changes the whole demeanor in the whole prison. Jason, you know, you said the darker the night, the brighter the light. Mm. You know, these, uh, Ian and uh, Julie was saying about the importance of prison ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, the king of the universe, the creator, the redeemer who died upon the cross of Calvary, Jesus, he said, as you've done it, when I was in prison, you visited me as you've done it unto the least of these. He's talking about the naked, the hopeless, the clothesless, the, the people in the hospital and the people in prison. He said, as you've done it unto the least of these, Jason. Mm. You've done it unto these, my brethren. Mm -hmm. So he equates himself with the, with the least of the least. And here he's the king of the universe. So wow. that's the beauty yeah. of, and Christmas Behind Bars is not just a seasonal ministry. It started that way 25 years ago at Christmas. Nothing to do with Santa Claus or Jingle Bells, but it's about the birth of Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, the crucifixion of Christ and the soon return of Christ. Amen. 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 Um, Lemuel, how important was it for you when you were incarcerated at one point to receive just a piece of mail? Yeah, mail is so important. So many of these people, Captain Turner, how many people would you say are indigent, which means they have no outside support when they're incarcerated? Rough guess. Uh, I would probably say out of 250 of our uh, offenders, I would probably say somewhere between 30 to 50 of them. Okay have nothing, no outside support. I thought the numbers were more like 60 or 70%. How many people don't get mail? Uh, that number goes way up. Way up, mm -hmm. no mail. So nobody to call, nobody that will accept their calls. They burned a lot of bridges. So the importance of a letter or a thinking of you card, and that's what they get in the bottom of every bag is they get a, a letter, a personal letter to them mm -hmm. uh, from Christmas behind bars and how testimonies and stories along with lots of literature, Bible study applications, devotional materials. They can send for free books. They can send to 3ABN. They'll send them a Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of ministries are in that envelope for them to send uh, for information. So, And so they only need to fill out, the beauty about that too, is they only need to fill out the, those forms, put it in that one envelope, correct? Amen. Mail it back to Christmas Amen. Behind Bars. Right and then it goes to those ministries. Right, so there might be 10 forms that an inmate might fill out. And then, so we'll separate those 10, whatever forms and we'll put them in the piles and we send those to the ministry. That way they only have to use one stamp instead of sign and send in each ministry. So we do that for them. And that's beautiful. Oh. There are a lot of moving parts with Christmas behind bars. What are some of the things, uh, or what are some of the ways that our viewers can help Christmas behind bars? Well, number one is prayer. Mm -hmm. Number two, as they grasp the idea of sharing this ministry, they could do this in their own church, reproduce it in their garage, make packages, take them to their local county jail. And so the idea can continue to go forward. So it's a franchise, if you will. It's free. Here's the ingredients. Go and market it, you know. And so yes. um, prayer. Bibles, we need Bibles, okay. used or new Bibles. Good condition used. Yes, yeah, sometimes we okay. get them where they're moldy. They were in the basement for 15 years. Those Bibles, we just can't use it because you're going to give it to an inmate and you want them to represent nice yes, for the gospel. So Bibles, uh, donations, we need, we need tires for the semi trucks right now, diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways they can help with the ministry financially. Okay. I'd like to put your contact information okay. on the screen and then if you could read that okay. for us, that way our viewers know right. how to get in touch. With Absolutely. Um, it would be Christmas Behind Bars. So you can write to or send your packages to Christmas Behind Bars, P.O. Box, 474, Post Office Box 474, and that would be Bluffton, B-L-U-F-F-T-O-N, Indiana, 46714. Again, that's Christmas Behind Bars, P.O. Box 474, Bluffton, Indiana, 46714. You also can contact us by phone. The phone number is 260 827 8835. Again, that's 260 827 8835. And the email is contact at christmasbehindbars.org. Amen. So, thank right, you, brother. Right. You're welcome, brother.
Captain Turner, what are some programs that are offered in your facility that may be different than other facilities and, and that are making a difference? So we have uh, several uh, companies that come in from Aspire to Inwell. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a MAT program, medically assisted treatment program inside of our facility. Okay. Uh, first one in the state of Indiana to do that. Wow. Um, and all of these things, uh, we have our peer recovery coach, uh, we have anger management classes, we have GED classes, we have uh, parenting classes, mm -hmm. we have a multitude of classes. So mm -hmm. trying to hit anybody and everybody to help them to rehabilitate them. Yes. We can't continue to incarcerate people across the United States. We have to rehabilitate mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to see them come back. That's we correct. We want to see them become successful and that be successful correct. in Christ. For Amen. sure. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I just kind of want to open the floor for anything that may be on your heart at, at this moment. Um, Captain Turner, if you want to look into this camera over here and you want to share what's on your heart. I think that uh, it does not take a great deal of effort on our behalf, but I think words can either kill or... Uh, or give life. And I think that it doesn't take very much on our behalf, especially in a correctional setting, to tell somebody that you believe in them and that you believe that they can do this. It may be the first time or a long time since they've heard that. So mm -hmm. I would suggest that say something, yeah. see what kind of life you can give this week. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Lemuel. I would like to say that the ministry Christmas behind bars, God ordained it, God's support, God has kept it going. Mm -hmm. And it's people like Captain Turner, it's people like 3ABN who believe in ministries like this and God gets the honor and glory. So he said we have to discontinue just incarcerating but rehabilitation. Amen. And we know that he feels that way, you feel that way and everybody here, mm -hmm. but Christ is the center of that beginning transformation. Yes, yes. So not just a behavioral modification, but Amen. a genuine transformation. Amen. I, I, I like that. And Julie, what's on your heart? Well, I just feel like I've learned that our job as Christians is to represent Christ. Mm -hmm. And that really just means we are supposed to represent Christ. Jesus is no longer here walking on earth. So now it's our job as Christians to represent him to the world. Amen. Mm -hmm. Ian? You know, uh, right now I'm thinking, because with my Bible that I have open right now, is 2 Corinthians 5.17, which says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Mm -hmm. I think we need to reinforce that with others, just, you know, to feel that love of Jesus, to accept him in your life. It doesn't matter what you've done or what you, how you feel about yourself. God loves you and he wants to cre recreate in you a new creature. Amen. 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 That's powerful. Thank you all for coming on and sharing and pouring out your heart. We want to thank you for tuning in. Until next time, God bless you. Amen.